Welcome to the second introductory video in using Multiphysics for IronCAD. In this video, I'll modify the FEA block by putting a hole in the middle and then reanalyze it. I'll also add a cylinder to the end and change the material type for that cylinder so that we have experience using multiple materials in our model. Um, but first, I'm going to change this back to 100 for 100 pounds PSI, 100 pounds for our force. Click on Auto Solve. OK. Now I'm ready to save the model. If I save the IronCAD model, this only saves IronCAD. It doesn't save the FEA. However, if I try to quit without saving the FEA, I'm warned to click Yes to save the FEA. So then this has saved both the FEA after we save the IronCAD model. Let me reload my model. I can also use this command over here at any time to save the current state of the FEA. This is useful if you've it's been a while and you've been working on FEA and you're afraid your dog's going to trip over the plug to the computer and you're going to lose all power and lose everything, then you can go ahead and use the F save FEA command over here. We're going to add a hole to this model. It's a good idea to use the save as command if you're going to actually change the model geometry and want to compare the new results to the previous results. I'll show you kind of a quick and dirty trick we're going to use that lets you do it once, but it's not a great solution. But anyway, we'll use the Save As Control, Save As option, File, Save As, and save this as Block, Hole. And um, then we have the option of saving the results. Um, yes, we're going to do that. So this created a, a new block hole and it copied all the FEA information to the new block hole model. So um, before we're going to, let's see, create a hole, I'll turn off FEA, drag a hole over to my model, use my favorite command by right clicking on the handle, edit size box, I'll make this 1.5 by 1.5 anything larger than my model is fine by two. I'll go turn on show FEA and at this time the sync button is on. The sync button means that the current FEA simulation is out of sync with the model. The model has been changed. Um, this can actually be useful. Uh, it's not done automatically because some simulations take like one to two hours to solve and so every time you made a change on your model you really wouldn't want to wait for two hours before you could do anything else. It's also useful because we can do a quick and dirty comparison with the new one. So the results from the previous one are still there. The files that contain the mesh and the results are still there so we can still look at it even though the sync button is on. I'll come up here and do copy sim to make a copy of my simulation. Um, at this time I could change it to a dynamic simulation. I'm going to leave it a static simulation. So now I have a copy of my simulation. I can click the sync button. Click yes because I want to remesh it. I know I've changed the mesh. And I can click the auto solve button to obtain a new solution. So here in the new solution with the hole in it, the deflection is about 8.9 times 10 to the minus 6 inches. If I go to my first solution, again using my little trick of not syncing it with the uh, the new changes in the model, I see I have 5.7 times 10 to the minus 6. Again, this is not a good long-term solution because the FEA stuff is going to complain every time you load your model because it's going to realize parts are not in sync. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this now that I've done my comparison. Um, and I'm left with my other model with the hole in it and the results from the other model. I can do an animate scale to show how things look and you can see most of the bending is in the skinny part here. If I change the contour to show the stresses, I can see the highest stresses are around this region here, which is what we would expect. We'd expect the same on this outer side here, we'd expect around 33, nothing's really changed. That's 33 PSI is the pressure we're applying. Here there's less material, so we'd expect it to get higher and in Indeed, it gets up to 80 right here and around 60 or so in the other part. Okay, the next thing I'd like to do is um, add 
a little cylinder to this end um, and change the material for this, this cylinder to aluminum. So I'll turn off the FEA information and I'll drag a cylinder. Now this is tricky. I want this cylinder to be made of different material. So I'm going to right drag using the right button and then connect it to the model using drop as part. This creates a second part. Each part can only be one FEA material, but since I made it a second part, it can be a different FEA material. So I'll click on it again, right click on the end of it, use my favorite edit side box, size box command to make it a diameter of one and a height of one. And uh, I'm ready to turn on FEA. Again, my sync button is active because the models aren't the same. I'll go ahead and click on sync. It tells me that bodies have been removed. Since bodies have been removed, it knows that the mesh has to change, and so it doesn't give us a choice of not saving the mesh. Um, and our new body has been added to the one material we had this, that was carbon steel, and it shows that there's two materials there. So to make a different material, we go up to the model one, which is the root of the material menus. We do add new material. I'm going to select non-ferrous and aluminum for my material. Now I have aluminum, but it has zero parts associated with it. So I go to add bodies, click that, click on the body that I want to add, and click accept, and click the accept button for the material dialog. And I now have um, one material associated with aluminum. You can see that it's selected here. It's selected here on the parts. If I click on this material, then in the scene tree, it shows part one selected. It shows part one selected here. So I can verify which material, which parts correspond to which materials. And um, I'm ready, almost ready to solve. Instead of applying the force to this surface, I want to change that. I want to apply the force just to this top surface here. So I'll click off the model to remove all of the all of the uh, boundary associations and click on just this surface click yes I still have a force on of hundred pounds but now it's only being applied to this smaller aluminum surface I'll click the auto solve button to obtain my results and uh, this time I see even a much higher stress 143 here in this aluminum th surface if I go to Looking at the displacement, I see a much larger displacement. Recall before it was, um, with the hole in it, was 8 times 8.8 .8 or something times 10 to the minus 6th. It's now 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5th. So a much larger displacement. We can animate it to see where the larger displacement is coming from. It turns out aluminum is both softer and it has a smaller cross section. So with the same force, we're getting a lot much larger deflection in the aluminum than we are in the steel. So that ends the second part of the introduction tutorial where we've added a new material by going to the model option here. Let me pull this down so we have a little space by going to the model leaf and selecting add new material. Then after we added the material, we use the add body option to change our bodies to select the body that we wanted part of the new material. And after that, we could just click auto solve to solve the model. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this and save the FEA just to save everything before I quit this part of the tutorial. Thank you very much. In the next tutorial, we're going to play around with meshing.